seconds to give my teammate a shot. I feel like we won this thing as well. 12 is going to win this race. We've been very close many years. We never executed it again. A long, dry spell for this driver. He will win the 50th Daytona 500. My dad was spotting for me, and I could hear the tears dripping. Hello, Newman. The last two Daytona 500 winners have had their struggles after winning the Great American Race. Last year, Kevin Harvick fell to as low as 14th in the point standings after a 29th place finish at Texas. He was 11th after Phoenix. This year, Ryan Newman is at his lowest spot in the standings after finishing dead last at Phoenix. And we welcome in the driver of the number 12 Dodge, the reigning Daytona 500 champion. He, of course, is Ryan Newman. And, Ryan, thanks for joining us. Uh, you win the Daytona 500. There are eight races into the season now. You currently sit 12th in the points. How would you characterize your season since winning the Great American Race? Well, I'd say it's a, a downward slope, but I hope to say that it will turn around and go back up. Uh, you know, we started on a high note, like you said, winning the Daytona 500. And, had some good runs, um, you know, some consistent runs, you know, finishing 14th and on up uh, to fourth. But uh, we've had a couple engine problems that have really hurt us. Uh, one at Bristol that uh, hurt us in practice, not getting practice time first of all, and then get involved in a crash after starting last. And, and then uh, obviously at Phoenix there, um, the engine didn't blow. It just uh, blew oil and leaked oil all over the racetrack. And I kept going because my engine was still going. And we, uh, we slaughtered the racetrack with oil. But, uh, you know, that, uh, those are two things that really hurt us this year. Um, otherwise, we've been pretty consistent, but not consistently in the top five. That's what we need to work on. So you would say more of a bad luck thing than maybe a Daytona 500 hangover that we've heard some of the drivers in the past talk about because of all the responsibilities and just how tough it is to get in a routine. Did you suffer from that at all? I don't think so. I mean, we, we answered back at California with a top 10 finish, and uh, we had a decent run at, at uh, Las Vegas. We missed on the setup a little bit, still finished 14th. So. We uh, didn't have the results that we wanted, but uh, I wouldn't say that they were a hangover type. Um, I think we've, we've done well. It's been a learning experience, again, just starting all over with Roy and uh, the team, and I think we've done well. Um, obviously, starting off great, but uh, you know, just need to turn us turn us our results around to the point that our points position starts increasing, and, and uh, we, uh, we get back on the track of being in the top top two or three in points. Mm, sounds good. Let's finish up with the 500 with this. Every driver that has ever won this race says that it forever changes their life. How about you? I, I know it has only been a short time, but, but how has winning the Daytona 500 changed your life? Really, it's just a sense of gratification for myself, for my family, for Roger Penske. Uh, but for me, I think just to have the connection with all the people that have helped me in my racing career, whether it's car owners or sponsors or family members, just people that have been there to help me, to give me the opportunity, whether it was my first uniform uh, that somebody bought me or, or my first sponsorship of $1,000, just people that have given me so much to be able to give back and just say thanks. I mean, that's all I can give them back is the word thanks. But, um, you know, to have them, you know, dedicate, whether it's their finances or their health, or their labor to, to give me the opportunity to get to victory lane and uh, the great American race is just a dream come true. Well, let's jump ahead to another restrictor plate race, of course, on Sunday at Talladega. You've had some success there, 12 races in your career. You got three top fives, five top tens. What are your thoughts about Talladega? Well, it's been hit and miss, but I'd say it's hit or miss for a lot of people. Um, you know, just the idea of the crashes and things like that, getting caught up in somebody else's mistake. You're at the mercy of so many other drivers and so many other situations. Going back a couple of years ago, and we lap four blew a left rear tire going into turn one, took out 20 some cars. It's just you just never know what's going to happen. And then you go back to last year, and Kurt and I had a you know a big push on each other and tried to out uh, out draft the Hendrick cars, and I finished fifth. I think he was seventh, eighth, and ninth, or something like that. But we just need to go back and have an open mind, hopefully put ourselves in the right positions. I think Sam's done a good job as far as restrictor plate racing at Daytona to be able to you know, add a third car to the mix to hopefully have a, a three-car draft and we'll see what we can do. Real quick, Ryan, as you look through the history books, uh, drivers that have had success at restrictor plate races seem to have more success down the line after they get the first one. How much more comfortable do you think you'll be come Sunday? I'll only be comfortable if I'm out front. That's the the easiest place and the best place to be. Uh, otherwise, it's a lot of work, and uh, you know my my dad as a spotter has to stay extremely busy and be on top of things. But when you're out front, it's uh, it's kind of like a a cool day at the beach uh, <laughs> until the end when it, sometimes there's a shootout. Good deal, Ryan Newman. Let's hope for another cool day at the beach on Sunday. We appreciate your time. <laughs> Thank you.
Lot more still to come on NASCAR now. Let's check out what's under the hood. Dale Jarrett won two races at Talladega in his career. Coming up, he gives us a key to winning Sunday's race.